during Masters Week, you can wear as much, you can wear Masters everything you want to. And, and it's mm. perfectly acceptable, right? You, mm. you, you can have the hat, right? You can pair it with the, the, the pullover, the belt, the socks. Does not matter. You can wear as much Augusta logo crap as you want to. Mm. But that's the only week of the year you're allowed to double logo. So <laughs> we, what, we, what we said was... Welcome to My Got A Podcast. I'm Jim Wood. In this episode, John Powell and I are joined by Jason Huggins. We talk about his Georgia story, the Masters, G-Day, and we answer questions from you, our listeners. As always, remember to check out the newly redesigned MyGotAPodcast.com to see our latest merch. You can follow us on social media at My Got a Podcast. Finally, if you need help with your website or your online presence, head over to WorkingWebMedia.com slash dogs. Now... Let's join the conversation in progress. All right. My God, a podcast back uh, for another off-season episode. Uh, it is Masters and G-Day week. So uh, for this, uh, here with not only John Powell, but also Jason Huggins, a.k.a. The Hug Dog. Uh, Jason, friend of the show, great to have you on. Welcome to My God, a podcast. I, I, why am I so nervous? <laughs> the man, the man, the man speaks. The man speaks hey, you to know what, this is, so this is many great. people. Uh, it's my yeah. It's my favorite week of the year. Um, my son and I were talking last night, driving home from Augusta there together, and he said, "Dad, this is the best week of the year, right?" And I said, mm-hmm. "Undoubtedly, pal. It, I mean, it gets no better." And um, so Masters Week is very special to me. All of my extended family lives in Augusta. I lived there for three years. I mm. got asked to work um, the Masters tournament uh, way back in 1987 and worked for 23 of them. So it was a really special thing. I, I would get to go back uh, to the to the tournament and, and work. I would, you know, my brother and I would get to stay with my with my nana, my mother's mom. And, uh, you know, you, you roll in from a long day carrying camera equipment and doing all this other mess. And uh, there's, you know, a hot cook meal that had been reheated five times because even though we told her we'd be home at eight, she, you know, everything was ready at six. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and then, you know, once, you know, fortunately, once, once she um, passed away and then, you, you know, you're trying to figure out where you're going to stay at night. And you, you thought, OK, it's, this is not as fun as it should be. Right. It, it was a, mm. it was a hassle. And so now just to be removed and then go back to Augusta, the minute you walk in the gates, you just forget about everything. It, and it's it's a special place, great week, and uh, thanks for having me on. Yeah, absolutely. I know uh, John and I, in, in our text threads, we've been talking all week, all week, it's Tuesday, but you know, just <laughs> about the Masters and how attention to detail they have, um, you know, just going from being there to showing through to social media. I know John, like, I, I don't know how many uh, like masters videos you've texted me already this weekend, but they're all <laughs> amazing. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I decided that I would turn on all the alerts this week. Um, so I'm getting <laughs> all of the tweets from the masters and all of the videos. So uh, things that I feel like I never would have seen if I didn't do that. So um, it's, it's definitely, it's definitely reminding, like, like there was a video that came out today, Jason, I'm, you probably saw it, but, um the uh, the 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 story of how they started skipping on 16 i'd never heard that story before and how yep. how it started so the masters is truly unique even on social media <laughs> yeah seriously 100, 100, really talking is. about that like tiktok even like they have a, a unique presence on tiktok so yeah one, one of the last years i was there this was so the current press building the new one the, the Shangri-La that's at the back end of the uh, practice area. Yes. Uh, I worked in the building, the two previous buildings before that. And um, the the original one was like an upside down tomato can buried halfway in the ground <laughs> just at the bottom of the hill uh, to number one tee box. Uh, now that's a fancy concession stand that looks like it was removed from the French Quarter. And, <laughs> and then behind that, it just like kind of up the slope where – you see the guys doing the the live from, they're doing the on-course reporting, and you see the course behind them. That's actually, as you're going up the hill 
on the first hole on your right before you get to the hospitality buildings, the old media building was there. So we would cut through the, the holly bushes or whatever. And that's how we would run into the media building. And we went down to the lockers where all the photographer equipment was because we were runners for, um, for photographers on the course. Mm. And we walk in this room, this door was open. We're like, what is that? We kind of look behind it. And it's these banks of servers. I'm talking like banks. We're like what, what is going on in there? And that's when they had, were first really doing the IBM Watson, like data analytics and they're pulling uh. everything. And they actually were debuting their social media channel that year. So that must have been 20. Mm. It was early 2010-ish. I, I, I don't yeah. know it's the exact year or whatever. And we're thinking, what on earth are they doing? And <laughs> yeah, now look at what they do. And, and of course, the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning is you want to hear, you know, Tuesday at the Masters. And you got to hear everybody yeah. doing the deal. And it's the greatest, the greatest week on, on the planet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it is nice. You got that. You got G-Day. She, you got Braves going on. We just had nat- basketball national championship Monday night. Georgia baseball is in full swing. Uh, it's, a good, it's a good time of year. Yeah, John, you, we, Jim and I were talking earlier. I had on the three TVs back here. And we turned them <laughs> off so it wouldn't distract everybody. But we had <laughs> Braves, we had Georgia baseball. We had Hawks. Uh, we had Golf Channel live from. It was, a, it was a, like a sports bar. It was great. Yeah, yeah. That's, that sounds that sounds like an amazing setup. Yeah, I'm jealous. I know, I know, I know. For us, like when we <laughs> sometimes when we have the Braves on, I'll, I'll be I'll, I'll be watching it while we're podcasting, and Jim will be like, "Oh my gosh, John, turn the Braves game off." <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I've got a TV over here, but I'm just not telling you about it. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Amazing. Well, we, I got. Let's let's get a quick bourbon check. I know. Uh, yep. Jason, I gave you a, a heads up earlier. So new bottle for me. I've got the old Forester 1910. Uh, just don't, I don't know. I'd never had it. Bought it. Thought I'd open it up. So that's I what it. I brought for, brought for the evening. That's awesome. I've got, uh, I've got old Forester 1920. <laughs> <laughs> Could not no. <laughs> no way. All right. So if you if you literally blend the two of them and get nineteen fifteen, it's better than both of the ten and the twenty together. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I'm gonna go uh, old school. I'm gonna do Elmer T. Lee. If for no other reason, it kind of looks like Ben Hogan. So um, <laughs> there we I go. Oh, that I like that. that. Be, I thought that'd be kind of cool. And uh, I'm drinking out of a unique and special glass. Um, when we started our bourbon project that we've done the last three years to raise money for the Terry college, our first barrel pick we did with makers and they were nice enough to donate some glasses. And back then we had just won our, our 21 national championship. So they had the three years on the glass for us. And I said, Hey, he said, Hey, we'll even dip the glass in, in red. I said, well, it would be really cool if you dipped it in red and black. And he said, <laughs> that's a good idea. So, um, <laughs> makers mark, if you're dumb enough uh, to buy two barrels, <laughs> if you're smart enough to buy two <laughs> b- barrels of bourbon yeah. and pay for it and then sell all the bottles to donate the money to Terry College, Maker's yes. Mark might donate 500 glasses for you to sell <laughs> to raise additional money. But we're in our third year of the project and we've raised over $100,000 for Terry College. So it's been a lot of fun. Do yeah. some barrel picks and we get some cool glasses every now and again. That's, That's awesome. One. That is who, who was who who was the brainchild of that project? Well, the the, the majority of the credit goes to Michael Dreyer. Um, okay. Michael's a good good friend of mine. It's Doctor Dre Dog on okay. on Twitter, and I think Michael and I were probably doing what we are good at, and that was having one of these and just saying, you know, wouldn't it be cool if we like, what if we did our own barrel pick, and what if we got people to invest in the barrel pick? And we could buy the bourbon, right? And then we could, mm. buying liquor in Georgia is a major pain in the butt. But we figured out a way to do it the right way. Mm. And so 10 of us bought 400 and some odd bottles of bourbon. And we donated it all. And then we said, okay, now let's sell the bottles at a, at a slightly higher than retail price so mm. that we can take every penny from every bottle and donate it to to Terry. And so um, it's been really cool. First year was Makers. Um, 
Second year, I'm looking at the bottles over here, 1792. This year, we did Knob Creek. And um, it's been a really fun project, great way to raise money for the school. And just like anything else, a great idea tends to start with good friends and one of these. Yeah. <laughs> Amen to that. Amen. Amen to that. Yeah. That's awesome. You'll have to, you'll have to take a picture and share it with the, with the people to, of all the different bottles that you guys have picked. Yeah, I'd be happy. I'd be happy to. It's it's really fun. The, the first year, by the way, we named them. So the first year hmm. uh, we, we, we order, we order the bourbon and wouldn't you know it, we win the national championship. So <laughs> the maker's mark bottle is uh, the name of the bottle is Three three one eight. That's the score of the national championship game. Yeah. Uh, the 1792 bottle, we did our own custom sticker um, that all the national championship logos and the LA winning mm-hmm. logo. Um, and uh, that was to be named B2B. Nice. For back to back. And the guys at, at, at Barton actually printed the stickers early. And we're like, what? <laughs> So <laughs> I'm like, cause we didn't, you know, we didn't want them to print them too early. And then yeah. this year we did Knob Creek and um, we, we had two barrels. One has a red custom UGA sticker. The other one has a white and on the front it's Terry alumni board and then better never rest Terry alumni board. So uh, we, we've, we've had a lot of fun with it. And uh, anytime we can raise money for, for the business school at Georgia, it's a, it's a great reason to do it. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's awesome. Fantastic. <laughs> um, John, do you want to you want to kick us off with your your we can we your can money kick, question? We can kick it off, Jason. We always ask everybody that comes on, and I have been anticipating the answer to this from you specifically. But what is your Georgia story? Um. So neither of our parents went to Georgia. Okay. Uh, my dad was a Georgia fan. My dad went to Davidson College and then to uh, to Candler School of Theology at Emory. So um, my dad was a Georgia fan. He took me to my first game, uh, this guy named Herschel. And um, <laughs> so, yeah, Georgia was playing Kentucky. And my dad takes me in and I walk I walk in from the from the like the breezeway or whatever mm-hmm. into the aisle and started to go down. And threw up. I was so excited. I was like, oh, my God, <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> um, no so that's my Georgia story. No. Uh, <laughs> it started a love affair with, with the dogs. I've, I've missed very few home games um, since then. Very few. Um, and then started traveling to more and more away games. And when I got accepted to Georgia – this was back in the day when this was early nineties. And when I got accepted to Georgia, I got accepted to Georgia, but I also got accepted to a couple of other schools and I couldn't figure out why. I was like, why am I getting accepted? I didn't even apply. I got accepted <laughs> to Auburn. I got a housing package from Auburn sent to my house to sign up for housing. I'm like, I didn't even apply to Auburn. <laughs> am I getting this? And I was a bit of a nerd and I went to and, and was selected to attend the governor's honors program way back in 1990. And back then there were some schools that effectively would automatically accept students that, that went into GHP. Mm. And so even though I got accepted at other schools, I didn't apply there (laughs) to go to Georgia. And um, did you get a degree? Did they send a degree along with it? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. If you drive by, they'll throw, if you leave the window down, they'll throw it. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, hey, you can give 10 bucks a year to Clemson and have an IPTA sticker, but, um, <laughs> but no, it, it was, um, it was just one of those things where, um, I just, I grew up, I grew up a dog. I grew up with my dad teaching me the love of listening to sports on radio. Mm-hmm. Um, I vividly remember, you know, going to bed at night, listening to, you know, the Braves, uh, on radio and, would he thought it was awesome when they were on the West coast. Cause you had a 10 35 game. So you turn your clock radio down a little bit, but you mm-hmm. could listen to sports. And um, my dad grew up in, in Cincinnati. So I grew up a, a Reds fan and 700, you know, WLW could get it at night. And yeah. I would, I would try to figure out, okay, which games could I listen to or watch growing up? 
Um, but but Georgia was Georgia was the thing, and um, it was quickly in my blood. And and the minute I went and puked on the um, <laughs> steps, I, I knew that that was where I needed to be. And um, I, I really have not missed many home games since I was a, a, a kid. And I, I I truly love it. And it just it creates. I, I mean. It sounds maybe a little weird. It's a little bit of my identity uh, now. And Mm -hmm. I love my wife, Dana. She she understood that from the moment we met, that we get there early and we don't leave till it's over. Um, Now we get there a little late and we leave a little early. Um, (laughs) And have a few responsibilities before and after the game. But, But my Georgia story is I've always wanted to be a dog. I knew how much it meant my social calendar revolved around it. And to this day, it's, you know, it, it, I mean, baseball, I love baseball season. I religiously have alerts set up so I can turn on, you know, Jeff and Dave and listen to them call the games. I want to, we got basketball tickets this year for the first time. Um, nice. So it's just, it's just something that we love. And when we, when, when Dana and I graduated one weekend and got married the next, um, anytime we go back to Athens, it's, um it's a magical place for us. And, and there's nothing better than the university of Georgia and Athens. It's, it is a, it's heaven on earth. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I will say, uh, I think Dana and, and Kim have that, uh, that understanding in common. <laughs> was, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, Kim always knew that, knew that about me too. So, uh, cheer, cheers to them for, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't know how she has, um, I don't know how she has put up with it for so long, but <laughs> maybe, maybe she's used to it or maybe she's accepted that that's, that's who I am. But um, I, I, it, I, you know, it's funny. The last thing I'll say about this is um, like most of us, I, I really lived and died with every play and, and heaven forbid we lose the game it would impact my mood for the week. And I, I just, I wasn't a nice person. I mean, I really was not. And generally I try to be a nice person. So <laughs> um, finally one day Dana said, you know, you, you really need to calm down. I mean, it's going <laughs> to not be good for you. Yeah. Okay. I hear you. Love you. And then I watched my son and my daughter and watched how much they got into it and they were learning it from me. Right. Mm-hmm. And and my one of my favorite stories of all time, the year that we played tech at home, nasty, rainy, cold. And it was the year that Mark Rick like screwed up the um the after we took the lead and he and he squib kicked the ball, mm-hmm. tech threw the play and then kicked the field goal. Yeah. Is that right? I like to go to overtime, they beat us. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So we're we're about to leave the stadium, right? We're about to walk out. It's me, my brother, Joel, and my son Hampton. And we're just ticked off mad. And then Georgia comes rolling down the field, scores. And so we had moved down. It was we were gonna leave. So mm-hmm. we were at the front of our section. And we're probably, you know, second row standing on the on the metal stand, watching this debacle happen in front of us. <laughs> and then we go to overtime and we're like, okay, we're gonna get them in overtime. And lo and behold, you know, tech wins a game and everyone's just you know, throwing pom pom. Why do you, you don't lose to tech? You just don't do it. Mm-hmm. I know it happens once every 10 years, but I'm never ready for it when it happens. <laughs> <laughs> and, and nobody around me was. So we're walking out. We're just frustrated and mad. And all of a sudden Hampton starts limping uncontrollably, like to the point to where I'm thinking, oh my God, like, has he broken his foot? What's going on? He's crying. I mean, he's just doing this, I can't move. And I'm trying to put him in the car. And then I realize he's moving okay, but like, he's just crying. And I said, how bad are you hurt? He's like, dad, it's hurt really bad. I don't know what to do. I said, dude, like if it's this bad, we've got to go to the emergency room. I can't drive you home with you in this much pain. We've got to go to the ER. And he's like, no, 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 I'll be okay. I said, Hamp, we've got to go. Enough. Stop. He goes, Dad, I just hate tech. <laughs> and the reason, <laughs> the reason he got that was because of me. And I thought, I've got to calm down. I've got to stop. I'm causing my son to fake an injury because he's so upset. And we lost uh, to tech. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I've, I've calmed it down. And now um, I don't have to be there at kickoff. Um, I don't 
yell and scream at the official for a missing holding on every play. And, uh, you know, it, I just, there, there's, there's, there are very few special Saturdays a year that you get to your best friends on earth in one of the most beautiful stadiums and cheer for the team that means everything to you. And maybe it's a little perspective, but, um, there's, there's nothing better than that. And, um, to the day I die, I will continue to support them and love them and treat every Saturday as though it's as holy as it is right now. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I had, I had a moment like that <laughs> uh, where I was like, okay, never, never again. Like I'm getting too upset about this stuff. Mine was with just with, with myself. So uh, my, uh, mine was, mine was when, mine was when uh, some, Friends would would not want to watch the game with us. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay, okay, I'll calm down. I promise. <laughs> but, it, but, it, but you know what though? It's really true because you've got people that you can watch the game with, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And even then, you've got people that you can't watch the game with. And, oh yeah, hundred percent. It, it's it. You have to be really careful about how you're going to manage that situation. Like, oh, well, we've been invited to so and so's to watch <laughs> such and such a game, and that's why I told my wife. I said, I'm going to eliminate that. I'm just going to go to every game. Yeah. <laughs> the, the year we opened at Vanderbilt, uh, whenever that was, 2018, maybe. I, I don't, it was Dana's birthday weekend because she's a Labor Day uh, birthday. Yeah. And it was a late night start, first game of the year in Vanderbilt. And so I wasn't going to go. It was her birthday. And I'm pacing all day long. I'm about <laughs> to lose my mind that I'm not where the dogs are playing. And finally, she looked at me. She goes, if you're going to act like this, I would rather you just go from now on. Just please stop <laughs> acting like this. Just go. And boom, I got my permission slip. <laughs> so now just go. It avoids uh, hassle and stress and, you know, worrying about who you watch a game with. For sure. I, I, I have to, like, warn people, like, because I'll be like, I'm not like, you know, hey, let's watch the game together. I'm like, I'm not sure you want to be around me <laughs> during the game. <laughs> So I, I do that because yeah. I'm I'm worse when it's on TV. Like when I'm there, I'm not like the most social person, but I'm not gonna, I don't freak out quite as much when I watch on TV. I, I just get more like nervy. Like I get super oh, nervous and like I'm a, so I'm a wreck when it's on TV. It's so bad. Yeah. When you, you mean when you can actually see the open passes and stuff on the exactly. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Or, or the or the call that wasn't made or the call yeah. that wasn't made that shouldn't have been. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know it right away instead of uh, like texting, you know, because right now, like with where our kids are at, a lot of times like I'll be there and Kim won't. And so I'll be like texting Kim. <laughs> Kim will actually now she just knows. And she just texts me bad call. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, so I get the heads up. I get the heads up with that. That means you, that means you, you found your right mate. So that's, that's right. That's, that's right. great. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So, so Jason, for, for you, I mean, like long, long time Georgia fan. We've been talking about this with our last, our last couple of guests, actually. Just like, you know, um, being a Georgia fan from mm-hmm. when you were a kid, and then seeing us, like, you know, I, I know, like George Foster likes to say, it's not like Georgia has ever really been bad, like in our era, but mm-hmm. to have be like so close all the time, and like just miss it and have it snatched away. And, and I, I guess too, like, so where I'm going is like with 2021, just like, what was that feeling for you of getting there and getting to that ultimate destination that you've been, you know, waiting on for so long? It was surreal. Um, you know, it, it was surreal. And we had, we, we've, I, I, I can't tell you the number of road trips and you know, I-16 drives where you're ticked off after losing to Florida again or whatever. And you just think one day it, it, it will be our day again, but you just wonder, mm. right? You yeah. just think maybe it, maybe it never will freaking happen. And, um, <laughs> yeah. and so, you it's know, you're going to happen. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, we all got our hopes up um, after the Rose bowl and then we, you know, play Bama and second 26 happened. Funny, funny story. Um, um, that second 26 play, we had left, we 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 had actually moved from where our seats were originally and gone downstairs because we were hmm. we were thinking maybe you were maybe, feeling yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh and I saw the ball go in the air and I looked down in the corner and uh, it was Devonta Smith, right? Yeah. So he, yeah, he's running underneath it. I don't think I saw him catch the ball. 
I think mm-hmm. uh, I think I'd already turned and started running out of the exit. <laughs> and my wife doesn't cry. And and she cried all the way home that night. She said, I I just don't know if it's gonna happen. I just I don't yeah. I don't know when it's gonna happen. So when we went to Indy and we got that thing done, um I I I, I don't know. I, it, it was surreal. Um when Keeley made the pick, <laughs> I I didn't know he scored. I did, not, I did not know he scored a touchdown. The minute Ringo intercepted the ball, Dana and Hampton, uh, Garrett, our daughter, wanted to be back in Athens. So <clears throat> we were we were there together. And the minute Keely picks off the ball, the three of us grab each other in like a little circle. And we're hugging and jumping up and down. <laughs> Meanwhile, Keely's streaking down the end zone, <laughs> coming right towards us. And I never saw an ounce of it. And I turned around, I looked at the scoreboard, and I said, holy cow, we just, I totally missed the whole darn thing. And, um, if it makes you feel any better, I had a similar experience with Clark. <laughs> Did you really? I'm yeah. glad to know I'm not the only one. Yeah, no. As soon as that pick happened, Carter and I lost our minds, and I ran straight out the door and started shooting off fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. I had no idea. <laughs> that is that is that is so that is so great. Well, earlier that day, we'd walked around Indianapolis, and of course, it was you know whatever ten degrees. Yeah, and, um, cold. <laughs> and and the and the the crew from SEC Shorts would they were in Indy that day. And they were walking around, and of course, Hope, you know, is walking around in a little yellow dress, and of course, she's got like parkas and all over, but she still got the little sash. And we took a picture with Hope uh, on on the sidewalk, and I looked at her and I said, "You know what, Hope? Tonight's the night that we break up." And she said, "She said, well, I hope for your sake tonight's the night that we break up." And I said, "We've been too close for too long. Tonight is our night." And I did. I went into that game. Uh, we went to this awesome pregame tailgate uh, it, it, inside of a baseball stadium. It was really cool in Indy. Mm. I don't even remember who put it on, but, but a big group of us went. And so we were kind of like in the club level of the AAA baseball team in, in Indianapolis. And they had this huge you know, tailgate thing set up. And everybody's talking it. And I just kept saying, God, this is our night. We, we are ready for this. This is our night. And to see that come to fruition – and to just experience that, I think I watched every possible video, every cut up on YouTube. <laughs> uh, we we drove back uh, from Indy. I listened to every possible call-in show podcast you could do. And I yeah. could not get enough of it because I'd waited so long. And then to come back and do it in 2022 was just kind of like, holy smoke, this is really going to happen. Yeah. And and if we don't do it in 24, I'm going to be really surprised. I really am. Uh, and, and that's how quickly you go from maybe one day to I expect it tomorrow. And that's a that's a blessing and a curse, but thank God that's our expectation now. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. These are the good old days. That's right. <laughs> these are these are the good old days, but can they just last for I don't know 20 years maybe? <laughs> <laughs> That would be great. That would be great. <laughs> oh man. I don't yeah. I don't know how Kirby's gonna survive. I, I I I just I in today's day and age of NIL and 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 the demands on these guys and the portal and I I I, I it's easy to figure out why Saban retired. And yeah, I, I I hope and pray that I hope and pray that Kirby has an outlet and can find his zen. And mm-hmm. not stress out to the nth degree, because if I were anywhere close to that position, I would have lost my mind by now. And I think, yeah. I think today's college football is just—it's a game that we, um, well, when we won in twenty-one, that was probably the last real college football national championship, actually. Yeah, yeah. that's. I think that's why that was why we wanted the three peat so bad was yeah. to just mm-hmm. like and you know it was literally the end of an era. You know we're going from four team playoff to twelve. We had already you know gotten an nil and transfer portal, and I feel like yeah. this is the, kind of the last straw. Um, I agree. I mean, man, if you you look at uh, Kirby's picture from the day he was hired to to now, you know, I mean, it's it's like the before and after president, you know, yeah. pictures, <laughs> right? I mean, it takes yeah. a toll. It takes a toll. Um, I, I, think, I do feel like something's got to give. I, I things. I I hope things just kind of 
settle a bit. Um, I know a lot of people are in like uh, athletic departments and such are like waiting for like legislation. And I, don't know. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put my hope in that. Like someone's going to have to figure something out, but, and it's, it, what, what's happening now isn't sustainable. You get Bear Alexander is in the transfer portal again, by the way. I don't know if y'all saw that. What? <laughs> like, yeah, he, that, that came out today. So, um, um, yeah, that would be if he sticks, sticks with that and does transfer, that's his third college in three years. Um, Didn't he go to four high schools in four years? And he went to four high schools in four years. Yes, yeah. correct. So, um, I mean, you know, and like basketball is even worse. Like you got to relearn the roster every year. Um, it's just, I, I feel like something is going to change. I don't know what it is, but I don't feel like we can keep going down the path we're at right now. I was talking with someone today about it and, uh, he said, you know, until there's a major gambling scandal, I don't think it'll change. Mm. And I thought, uh, huh, never thought, thought of it from that angle, but yeah, I mean that yeah. may, maybe that's the thing that, that tips the scale one way or the other. So, Could be. Um, yeah. I thought that uh, the the Jalen the Jalen Rashadas of the world like that get like um, bait and switched by schools where they yep. are promised promised all these monies like there's that lawsuit that Florida's up against with with that situation. It's those kinds of things that I feel like are going to bring the whole house crumbling down because schools Maybe. schools are not going to want to pay money. They're not going to want to have to put up with the whole like. The what was the Alabama lineman that transferred to <laughs> Iowa and then came back after he yeah. got the money from the dealership? <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, Proctor, right? Caden, yeah, yeah. Caden. Caden yeah. yeah. and yeah. he's really good, by the way. He's really yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. But to your point about like you know, I don't know how Kirby's going to survive. I've heard, I've heard multiple people, the inside sources talking about you know that they didn't think that he would be coaching beyond like. 2027 or something like that. Like the, it, there's not that many years left in, in the tank for him in that regard. Um, I've also have heard that, you know, he's got like a, a mental health professional, like after the 2017 game, I had heard that Kirby actually had a therapist like with him after the loss to coach him through the, you know, how to, how to process it kind of thing. Yeah, wow. I think that that's where a lot of the like the whole like coming up with the sayings and some of that I think was born out of a lot of that. Yeah, that, that's really cool. Yeah, as soon as he said that he you know got his phrase from Nike, I was like, just do it. Why would he? Why would he use that? <laughs> and then thank God he didn't pick that phrase. I was like, oh, I'm good. Uh, <laughs> Thankfully, <laughs> it's a little bit more creative than that. Right. Uh, incredible. Um. Okay, I I want to s- skip to something. This we you know we we got a ton of listener questions, but this one didn't come in through Twitter. This one came in through a text message, and I actually want to start with it, Jason, because this is something that I have adopted, and it originated with you. So we would mm-hmm. we're kind of hoping to get maybe some kind of backstory or something. So this is from friend of the show Hunter Jones, uh, Hunter Jones on Twitter. Uh, n- new dad, by the way, for those who don't know, uh, Hunter and, and Meg the Jones uh, welcomed their, their firstborn uh, recently. They have a master's baby, uh, so c- congrats to, to the Joneses. Um, but true it, <laughs> true it, the Jones, true it, the Jones. True it, the Jones. <laughs> um, okay, so Hunter texted and said he wanted us to discuss this with you, Jason. He said, "Not a question." But I need you to tell Jason that we need an on the record, in depth explanation of the double logo theory and where it came from when it comes to game day attire. And then he said, and what are his absolute favorite game day attire items? Oh, so, wow. Jason, tell everyone about the, the no double logo. <laughs> it, it came from Augusta National. And uh, when you, the, the, and the reason why it became a thing was we, collectively along with fratastic nation and anybody else that would you know <laughs> dare to talk about what you wear or give a crap <laughs> I, it's kind of like during masters week you can wear as much you can wear masters everything you want to and and it's mm. perfectly acceptable right you, mm. you you can have the hat right you can pair it with the 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 pullover the belt the socks does not matter you can wear as much augusta <laughs> logo crap as you want to but that's the only week of the year you're allowed to double logo. So 
we, <laughs> what, we, what we said was, okay, we're going to apply that. We're going to apply that to UGA stuff. And I'll be darned if you're ever going to, you know, every now and again, there will be a slight mishap on my part and there will be a slight <laughs> double logo. Hampton picked up on the fact that Easter weekend, we had a, we had a little sunrise nine um, sunrise service. And, um, and he goes, Hey dad, your double logo. And I said, Hey, hush, don't, don't talk. And, awesome. Awesome. and so I, it, I think it became a thing because we just loved the people that would show up at the masters and would literally have on soup to nuts, Augusta gear. And we thought, you know what? You can get away with it this week. It doesn't really matter. So that extended into UGA um, and football attire and, I'm a huge fan of the standing four logo. Yep. Absolutely, absolutely love it. So I, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I like, I like having this logo up top because I've, I've tried to acquire a few other um, pullovers like this hoodie or whatever. So like, if if standing logo goes here, I've got a G belt, a power. G I like to wear, and um, and then the hat. You got to be really, you know, selective about how you match that up or what have you. <laughs> I think, I think number one, it's it's probably, um, you know, snobbery. And part two, it is just kind of <laughs> like, you know what? I'm not just going to be like bookstore guy. Uh, I'm, I'm going to put mm. thought to what I wear to a game because I care and it matters. And I know that's ridiculous. <laughs> but that's, the, that's the on the record uh, answer to your question. Um, um, fantastic. It, 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 it's it's just a thing. Um, and, and now it's, I don't know. It, <laughs> I, I pay attention and I shouldn't, but I do. I, I, I think, I think this is a great, this is a great segue to a, a merch, a merch plug. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah, we, we can That's help true. you. We can help you with the double logo. Jason. That's true. If you, if you, <laughs> yes, need, you can, if you need some vintage, <laughs> you need some vintage UGA logo attire, uh, head on over to homefield.mygotapodcast.com and uh, use the code hunker down to get 15% off your first order. <laughs> Boom. I'm down. Both it. Both it. <laughs> no, but, uh, so, so actually my, my wife was admiring a very sharp uh, satin jacket that you had on last year, uh, Jim, at one of the tailgates. <laughs> yeah, oh, she's like, Oh, I'm going to have one of those. So yeah, I, I, we were, we were on the site uh, using our discount last year and we we we've already gotten some home field apparel and it is uh, quite snazzy and Fantastic. Uh, yeah they no they they put out a great product but it, all the way down to like the like the golf course logo Hampton mm -hmm. my son I was talking about the other day the um it, look it's really cool we've got one logo this is a power G with the cross golf clubs that's mm -hmm. cool yeah but the old school bulldog leaning on the golf bag yes freaking awesome yes. That awesome is, stuff. Yeah, yeah, um, that is super cool. Um, you know, um, our buddy Brian from Augusta, he he held up a koozie the other day with Georgia Tee Off Club, and it had the old school Georgia logo on it. And I was like, sign me up for that. Yeah. I <laughs> yes, it. yes. And, uh, I mean, I'm thinking, I'm already thinking, I would put that sticker on my car. I mean, that's really, really cool. <laughs> I would remove the four-legged dog, and I would put that on just because it's great. I, and it's different. So I, like I said, I, I am like – totally on board with the no double logo um and it was to the point like when so when hunter told me about it i was like oh my gosh i was like this is this is amazing like this is revolutionary because like i would very often it's easy to have you know a polo with the power g on your chest and wear a power g hat like you know that's probably what was my kind of go-to thing and then when i heard that i was like oh no i can't do that so you know so i would usually actually for a while i would usually rock the power g polo with a standing dog hat because like, i do have a standing dog hat and now i just like i another thing that hunter gave me was like don't wear the same thing to any like back-to-back -back games or, or just throughout the whole season so I, I mix and match all kinds of stuff which i do some people have given me grief like well that's like a lot of stuff i'm like well no. <laughs> it's an obsession i guess you know what? If, if that's your thing, God love you. You've that's got right. a great thing, right? Because there are people out there that have way worse things that they're way doing worse with. things. That's so, true. Yeah, I mean true. that's 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 a thing, and that's perfectly fine. But Masters Week, you can triple logo. Doesn't matter. You, got it. You, it. Free pass. You get one week a year. So to to your heart's content, get after it. Love it. But but here's what's crazy. Guess what? I did not do. 
I did not double up good with Masters. I made sure <laughs> there we go. that I had properly. I uh, noticed. <laughs> yeah, I, I made sure that I, I moved things around uh, in such a way where it wasn't a uh, double logo. Uh, that's nice. so good. That's so good. Awesome. Okay. Hunter, I hope, I hope that did it justice, Hunter. Hopefully, Hunter. <laughs> Hopefully, Hunter is satisfied. All right. Uh, I think we could just keep keep rolling through these because we got a, sure. we got a pretty good wide range of topics here. Um, the, people, the people love Jason's thoughts. I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was amazing. It was amazing. Everything was flowing in. It was pretty quick, too. I loved it. Um, all right. Coach Trillbill uh, said, for everyone, who is a returning player you want you most want to see in the spring game and then a new player you want to most see in the spring game? So Arian Smith has gotten a lot of pub um, during the early spring practice. Uh, I thought that the the social media um, video that they showed kind of the the ball in flight Mm. from Carson and it kind of zoomed in it's it's scrimmage too. And then Arian's blowing by a guy. Um, Mm. That was really, really cool. Um, You know, Arian is one of those guys where I've met him once. He couldn't have been nicer. Mm. And he just – I, for whatever reason last year, it just wasn't happening. He had some plays, but I just, I feel like this might be the year for him. And I would mm-hmm. love to see him do that. Um, I, you know, I, I know that Marcus was really a strong vocal leader in that, that locker room last mm-hmm. year. But, and, and Marcus is a tremendous dude. He, what a great young man he is. And so I think Arian maybe has a chance to, to, take that role now that Marcus is gone. So mm-hmm. I'd really love to see him break out. And um, any dude that leaves Florida and comes to Georgia, <laughs> <laughs> despite his driving habits, I, I, I want to see him. Right? And <laughs> so, you know, is it Etienne, Etienne? I have no idea. <laughs> I just call him, I just call him TDTE. So, um I, I want to see that guy um, really break out. And I think that he could be a perfect table setter for us next year, because there's no way on God's green earth, I would want to tackle, you know, Rod Robinson in the fourth quarter. I mean, when I saw what he did to Florida state, I thought, Holy moly. Yeah. He's, he is a freaking nature and can move. Right. So if we can just beat people down, for three quarters and then oh, say, okay, son, you go around the rock. I mean, people are going <laughs> to get out of his way. I would. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I want to see, I want to see ETN get after it. Beautiful. We've got like a four headed monster. <laughs> I know. Seriously. Mm-hmm. JP, yeah, who no, do you, who's your returning player or, and, and new player for the spring game? Yeah. I, uh, Marler and I got into it on, uh, with, uh, <laughs> shocking. With, <laughs> We got into it with the the uh, Arian Smith comment as well. I, I'm like you, Jason. Like that was when I saw that, I was like, "Oh my gosh!" Please tell me that Carson Beck and Arian Smith are on the same page finally. <laughs> <laughs> For real. And then Marler was like, "He's still there." Oh, I saw that. I saw that. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's been there. He's been hurt. You know, he's got new quarterbacks, like new coaches. Mm-hmm. So like, mm-hmm. this is kind of like. This is his swan song, uh, if you will. So I'm hoping that he he strings together a banner year for himself. So I don't think anybody really knows, but if Munden played as hurt as much as he did last year and was as productive as he was last year, mm-hmm. and he's actually fully healthy now, yeah, God help the SEC because he might he might break some records because he's that good. Yeah, yeah, there was uh, – Smile was one of the guys that um, Jim and I like to watch the YouTube videos for this guy called Top Villains. Mm. Um, and he's a, he was very, very vocal about Smile Mundan being a uh, an absolute beast. And I have a feeling that he was probably not happy with his performance. So if he was hurt, like, I, I – yeah, I would have him down there as well on the defensive side for sure. Yep. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. I am a little surprised, John. I mean, I know the, the social media stuff there, uh, Aaron's pissed top of mind. I was, I was kind of expecting you to say Anthony Evans because you know, you've been pretty high on him. So I'll, I'll, I'll throw him in there. Uh, want to want to see what he can do? Yeah, I guess. I mean, I kind of expect Anthony Evans to do Anthony Evans things because he just seems like that dude. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of equate it to when. Um, 
you guys remember when uh oh my gosh i'm blanking on his name hardman Miko, when Miko, like he gives me Miko Hardman vibes. Like whenever Miko got the ball in his hands, he was just dangerous. I mean, yep. it, it was like he was shot out of a cannon when he returned that punt in the SEC yeah. championship game. It was like, where, yeah. where did that? Who, who, who was that? Like, where did that come from? Um, no, hey, then, no, no inside information. But I'm yeah. sure Anthony Evans is still on our roster after G Day. I'm worried about him. Mm, okay. Okay. I, I think I think he's one of those guys that. If you think about it in today's world that we are in, highly talented, not currently scheduled for a ton of playing time, but clearly has enormous potential. What if somebody comes in and offers him, you know, X amount? Oh my gosh, Jason. Jason. <laughs> <laughs> See, that, these are the things you have to think about in, in today's uh, college football that I, I would like to do away with, like this, like. Like, you know, one transfer window. Like, it's, I don't want to have to worry exactly. about this. Exactly. Yeah. I know? mean, it used like, to be really cool. If you got somebody's commitment, you go lock them in a, in a closet for three months <laughs> until signing day. That's you right. make him sign on the ink, and then he's yours. That's now, right. You're like, yeah. It's, it's free agency all year long. Camp out, in, uh, camp out in Herschel's long, front yeah. lawn to make sure he comes to Georgia. Um, <laughs> and then I don't even know if he's here yet, um, but I'm always going to be excited to see Michael Jackson just because his name is Michael Jackson. Uh, I'm, I'm excited about him, so I'll add that one. Um, okay, then, you, can't, you can't beat it. You can't, oh, no. Wow, oh, nice, oh, nice. Oh. Um, <laughs> Jason, uh, coach also wanted to. He had he had some uh, tailgate questions. He's just curious on how you get the <laughs> how you pull it off um, with, with, with your parking at Tate, and then he's also just curious, like average number of people who attend your tailgate for a home, home game. Uh, I know coach got to experience it. We, we brought, we brought him by for, uh, for, for a game this past season. I know he had a blast. So the old Lipscomb lot, uh, which is where the Bolton dining hall is now is where we started in 95 when we uh, graduated. And, um, mm. my in-laws at the time lived in Jefferson, Georgia. So we would actually, this was way before, all the horrible rules today, but we would drive down on Friday night, leave a car packed with all the stuff. And then Dana's mom would drive us back to Jefferson. We'd spend the night and then they'd drive us back down the next day. And then we had our tailgate spot. And then in 1998, we moved into the Tate lot. When I worked um, back in the, in the corporate world, I worked with uh, Chevron corporation and they were a sponsor of the dogs and, I was a willing participant in setting up a tailgate <laughs> for, um, for for people to come and enjoy uh, pregame festivities, and and then fortunately one one of my one of my best friends on earth, uh, he and and his family um, have have a a huge impact on UGA, huge impact, and um, and so we we've they've been kind enough to to kind of allow us to you know, share in, in that spot in Tate. And um, there are really four constant tailgates uh, in the Tate lot. Um, we all look after each other. And, um, you know, if, if someone just, you know, gets their dad's pass and says, Oh, I'll get in there really early. And, you know, I'll set up a tailgate in this great spot. Mm. No, you won't. <laughs> um, that's not going to happen. <laughs> and um, so we all watch after each other. If somebody's running late and, you know, we we go and make sure that spot is is taken care of, yeah. and uh, it's it's a little bit of a fraternity uh, down there. And you know, average uh, you know average game. I I have no idea. I can tell you reservations on food, but <laughs> it, you know, a bigger a bigger game. I let's see what's the big home game last year. Um, Ole Miss. Ole Miss. I, it was I, nuts I, down there. I, it was nuts. <laughs> <my head count. laughs> I stopped the head count at, at, at 240. I was I was so I was so nervous, y'all. I was just so in fits over like, oh my gosh, because Ole Miss is the perfect storm for a tailgate. Mm-hmm. Everybody wants to be there. Yep. Everybody's Facts. bringing friends, right? Yeah. But the problem is, is all your kids' friends <laughs> that didn't get into Georgia probably went to Ole Miss and they're all coming to hang out with their, with, with your kids, friends or, mm. or your friends, kids, and they're all coming to tailgate and you have no idea how many of them prepared 
eight or whatever. And so you're trying to judge like, how do I, how do I feed the people that have said, Hey, I'm coming, you know, I want to be in on the catering order versus how many walk-ups are you going to have? And you're like, oh, yeah, sure. You know, feel free to join us. And right. I, I did. I lost my mind on, on that Thursday night at Ole Miss week. I was like, okay, reservations are, are done. I literally can't order anymore. Please stop and be respectful when you go through the line the first time, because there are people that, you know, have, have asked for food. I want to make sure everyone has things. Yeah. Now, if it's a 12 o'clock directional Tennessee, you know, <laughs> Middle Tennessee or Northeast Tennessee or whoever we're playing, East Tennessee State, um, that's going to be, you know, that that's going to be probably 50 to 75. And mm. then your bigger games are easily, I'm feeding 200 plus and we're going to have three to 400 before kickoff because we are the last, <laughs> we're the last cocktail before you walk in. <laughs> and let me tell you, um, just when you think you brought enough, you have not. <laughs> and I've experienced it far too often. And, um, and you know what, though? It's, it, is, it is completely a labor of love. And there are guys that just go out of their way to, to help. And, um, yeah. you know, during COVID, people bought beach houses and lake houses and all this cool stuff we bought a tailgate house. So we bought a house in Athens and it's been revolutionary for me because I would leave Atlanta on a game day at four 30 in the morning to be in Athens before six to kind of make sure we were set for the day. And if we had a night game, Holy smoke. I mean, it, there, there would be times when I wouldn't get home. I would leave and not get back until 22, 23 hours later. But mm-hmm. now being in Athens, wake up, walk down the spot, get it all set up, figure out what we need to do, get back, shower up, and then get after it all day. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a, um, it's an honor to be down there. It's a pleasure to be able to get to see so many great friends walk by and you never know the person that you, you know, graduated with 20, 30 years ago that may come by because they know, Hey, that's where our, our group's going to be. And you get to meet their kids and it, it it's, it's special. It is exhausting, but it is really, it, it's just something I treasure and I love it. I love everything about it. Okay. So because you said that, I, ha- I have to say this, because that happened to me at your tailgate at the Ole Miss game when Matt Haney was there, high school. Uh, yep. I wouldn't, not, not classmate. He, we were one year apart, but I had not seen him forever. And we had through conversation had realized, you know, that we had that, that mutual friend. And, uh, it was, it was awesome. I think I remember I, we took a picture. I think I sent it to you like from in the game, like, thank you for like making this happen. Yeah. I hadn't seen him in so long. It was fantastic. So I've even experienced that at your tailgate. <laughs> well, that, that's awesome. I appreciate you sharing that. And, and that's, um, I mean, quite frankly, that, that's one of the points. Um, it, it, it's a um, it's a central meeting place. Everyone knows where we're going to be, and um, and you never know who's c- going to come by. It's your usual cast of sub, you know, mm-hmm. of suspects uh, most weeks. But then every now and again, you know, here will come, you know, so and so you hadn't seen in twenty years, and it's like, holy, yeah, holy crap! I'm so glad you're here. It, it's great to, to see you, and it is it is absolutely. Um, it's a it's a labor of love, and a lot of people put a lot of hard work into it. Yeah, the Tate Gate is a special place. <laughs> yep, the well Tate said. Gate. Yep, yep. Uh, we we had a sign made up that the Tate Gate tailgate, um, and that is. Uh, I mean, we have our own Facebook group because we have to figure <laughs> out who's coming. <laughs> that's we communicate to people like, okay, this is going to be like a twelve noon uh, East Tennessee State kind of a game. So yeah. like, okay, hey, it's twelve noon. It's a kitty game, so everyone <laughs> bring a, a it, uh, everyone bring a brunch item to share, and mm-hmm. you know come and hang out. And then um, you know depending on who's taken down and who's doing what, you know hey, maybe we'll do post game. Um, yeah. And thankfully, technology has gotten a little bit better to where we have incorporated a television because where we are is just it's in a hole and you can't get a satellite signal. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, it's been nice to be able to stream a little bit. Uh, that that has helped to watch other other games. Watch yeah. the other games, yeah, that's that's great. Yeah, I can I can attest to Jason's uh, labor of love. I believe that you were like third or fourth in line 
on one of the games that I ran by in the morning. I did my pregame run, and I came <laughs> I came by, I explicitly came by uh, Sanford just to see the tailgate, and uh, I, I think I ran by and gave you a high five because I noticed that you were in the car. <laughs> there he is, he's right there. <laughs> yeah, we, 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 uh, we start early. Amazing, amazing. Let's see, uh, Brett Building. Uh, we, we we brought him. <laughs> we we brought him to a tailgate this year too, Jason. Um, he so he wants to know what is the most popular item at your tailgate. Uh, generally, my bourbon bar. Um, <laughs> it's pretty pretty. Um, can confirm. Yeah, can can, can <laughs> confirm. Um, um, look, matter of fact, the bourbon that you're drinking tonight—that was the first place that I'd ever had it. Was at your tailgate. There you go. Boom. Nice. Um, so. Uh, my favorite tailgate item. Um, I love buffalo chicken dip. Freaking love it. Can't have enough of it. Um, good to know. Yep. Uh, really, really good. Um, those stupid little um, nasty mini donuts in the in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking kill them! Oh my gosh! The like early morning with game. the chocolate with the chocolate on them. Oh yeah! Uh, I like to eat the chocolate. I like the variety pack, like chocolate powdered and like the little salmon crunchy thingies. Yeah, oh, I'm all over it. Uh, so any early game we have, and we're doing the kitty game or the brunch game, um, you can count on the hash, uh, hash brown casserole from Bread Basket in the little Chevron station off of Prince Avenue, mm. and a bag of mini donuts just so I can just you know. Pop them like. That sounds fantastic. Yeah, that sounds fantastic. That does sound fantastic. <laughs> uh, well, wait a minute. I'm curious. What is your what's your favorite? I mean, for me, it's the thing that I have to have for every game, even if it's not at a tailgate. If it's at we're watching at home, is Ponda's famous bean dip. So that's yep. that's that's the staple. And that I will say, as far as popularity goes, when we hosted the tailgate that we had, like when I was in college, like it was like. Uh, the bean dip became like legendary in our fraternity. And there were like guys who were like obsessed with it. It would be like, Jim, like, does your, when's your, is your mom going to like send any more bean dip? And that that's actually partially why I had to learn how to make it myself to like appease the masses. So. There you go. <laughs> John, what about you? Uh, Ponda's bean dip is definitely up there at this stage uh, of my tailgate career. Um, I would also say that tacos from the gas station <laughs> are, are quickly rising, are quickly <laughs> rising up the up the range too. Um, but I, I just, I just uh, a barbecue sandwich. I, I, I'm a big, big fan of barbecue sandwich, and then you know Chick Fil A, and I've also done and really appreciate the the Little Italy pizza tailgate pizza. Mm. We've, we've taken little Italy pizza to tailgates before, uh, and that's been amazing. Damn, I've got really a, cool. I've got a great. Um, I think you guys have come to our barbecue tailgates at least a couple times, and we've got a great local hookup in Athens. And his brisket is the brisket, yeah, yeah. Oh man, it is. It's freaking awesome. Um, but I, you know, it's funny how um, you get you the bean. You got to have the bean dip, right? <laughs> so um, one of our dear friends and damn good dogs, Trisha Newton, uh, several years ago, showed up at a tailgate and she had made these little, they're like little mini pretzels and you put a Rolo on top and then you kind of squeeze a little M&M on top of it. Mm. And then you just chill them and it's a little snack that you eat. Well, uh, my family, particularly my son, took a liking to them. And um, <laughs> Trisha, God love her. She is incredible. She will show up at almost every tailgate and she will have, whether she puts them out for everyone to share, them, <laughs> she always brings some for camp. And right. I, I tend to skim off the top and keep a few for myself. It's a dad tax. It's a dad tax for sure. But, but it, it, it definitely is part of that post game victory celebration experience. It's kind of like, yeah, I want to have a good bourbon. I want to, you know, may need something to eat depending on when the game was, but maybe a little Trisha Rolo pretzel treat would be really good with that. And uh, so that's absolutely a favorite of mine at the tailgate, hands down. How do you feel about how do you feel about Nutter Butters and Buffalo Trace? <laughs> you mean this? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, 
had never heard about it. Uh, heard about it from from Lou uh, and uh, and from Jim, and I thought you got to be kidding me. That's <laughs> that that can't be good. And then I had it, and I said that'll change your life. And so uh, the butters are um, always at one seven seven Flint Street. I'll just leave it at that. So always yeah. there for post game for sure. Nice, and maybe even now. Um, or we've got a bit of a family affair that, that begins. So you, you've mentioned Garrett and Garrett came in with a question. Hmm. Who's your favorite daughter? <laughs> <laughs> I've got one, so she wins. <laughs> so she, she did say, um, all jokes aside, although I guess this one kind of blends. So she said, what tailgate food are you looking forward to the most this season? But then she also said, um, which SEC atmospheres outside of Georgia are your favorite? Oh, okay. Great question. Um, br- uh, brisket from Breedlove, mm. Brunswick stew from the Butt Hut in Athens, out by the bowling alley. Really, really good. Nice. Um, really good. And then uh, we started using Sorcheros last year out uh, of tailgate uh, to cater. Really good. Met I like. Yeah, there's Sorcheros, there's Chipotle, there's Willies, there's all these different. So chairs are really good. Um, nice. I can't wait, can't wait to have them back this year. And we also used uh, Fully Loaded uh, downtown and Five Points. They were phenomenal. They did a great job. Mm. So can't wait to work with them again uh, this year. SEC and Atmospheres. So, I mean, literally, I could spend 30 minutes on this topic <laughs> because well, because I, I, I'm, I, I love tradition. I love it. Yeah. And the sec is so steeped in tradition it it just it's it's unmatched right and i literally can think about something that i love at every sec school including some of the weird ones right um <laughs> I, I mean it's top true. five uh, <laughs> top, top five um i love going to lsu i freaking love it mm. I, I i love the tiger band, uh, the, like the, whatever they're the golden girls and the, like the whole, that tiger. I, I freaking, I will, I'll pull up YouTube videos of college football stadium performances of different bands in the summertime. It's crank it up. It's like, okay, I gotta get, I gotta get prepped. I gotta get ready. Um, LSU is, is, is awesome. I mean, where else can you eat jambalaya off a boat or, and put it in like a French fry tray and think it's the greatest thing ever. It's awesome. LSU, Even though it smells like LSU hormones. is one of my that was my number two behind Vol Navy thing. Yep, uh, yeah. it, it, it's it's truly it's truly remarkable. Uh, there's something amazing about going to Kentucky and being able to do the Bourbon Trail mm. and Keeneland and the whole nine yards. That that is really freaking awesome. You know Vanderbilt and all the cool things going on in Nashville is is really um, awesome. Um, I, I love Auburn. I mean, I, I love going to Auburn. I, I know yeah. so many people that have gone to Auburn, and Auburn is the only tailgate in the SEC where you're friends with your foes before the game and after. Yeah. I don't know of any other school that I can do that with. Um, I, would, I would agree with that assessment. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Love going to Auburn. It's an easy drive. It, I, it just it's a, It's a great – it's an awesome spot. I mean, I just, I, I love Auburn 363 days a year. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> whatever that w- works out to. Um, but, but number one uh, for me uh, outside of Athens is um, the world's largest outdoor cocktail party. Um, it is, hmm. it is special. Yeah. It is, um, it is unique. It, it's one of those deals that you just, you plan your, you plan your fall schedule around and, you know the the whole um, the whole pregame party scene get out of hand. I, that, that's not, that's not that's not me in any way, shape, or form. But but just the 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 pageantry and the coolness of the fact that half the stadium is blue, half is yeah. red. It, it it I don't. I would love to. I've never been to a Texas Oklahoma game in the Cotton Bowl. I'd love to see that. Mm-hmm. Um, but. There's just something about that atmosphere, but but more importantly about the whole week. Mm-hmm. I mean, last year we went down on freaking 
Saturday or Sunday and we're there all week long <laughs> and have different nice. friends come in and leave and you, know, you play golf and you do a little work and, and it's just, I don't know. It, it, it's pretty special. I love it. I love it. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, Jason, Jason, have you ever been to the swamp? Just totally out of yeah. the field. Okay. Yeah. So I went to the swamp and uh, trivia, fun trivia. Uh, <laughs> I got engaged that morning. So oh. uh, I got engaged the morning that, uh, so this was in October of 94. And, and uh, so we, we had some family in St. Simons. We went down for the game because that was when they were um, renovating the Gator Bowl. I was just about so saying, we did, it must have been yeah. the home and home, right? Yeah. So, um, so we go down and the morning of the, of the game, it was raining. I mean, it was, it was raining. <laughs> Not just <laughs> raining. It oh yeah, raining. I remember that. It was raining, and um, so we're we're Dana and I were staying with her aunt and uncle in St. Simons, and I said, "Hey, look, let's go walk on the beach." And she's like, "No, why would we do that?" <laughs> I said, "Because it's beautiful." And I can actually hear like, her saying that. It. <laughs> but it's gonna get it's gonna get better. I mean, I, I just you know I yeah. saw you know the weather forecast. Of course, we didn't have phones back then, but you know, it looks like it's gonna clear up, and it's kind of lightened up and. Literally, I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to go on my own. And she's like, okay, oh, my gosh, I'll go with you. And so, um, Fine. Yeah, we, we went we went over to, to see Alan, and we were walking on the beach, and we kind of went down the beach. And then when we, like, turned around so we could walk back towards the car, when we, when we turned around, she started walking back this way. And I, you know, am down on a knee uh, waiting to propose to her. And so she comes over, and she – She's freaking out and she knocks the ring out of my hand. <laughs> oh, no. And the ring goes flying towards the water. And ah. I think I said, like, oh, the ring. <laughs> and I literally dive and grab it before the the, the wave comes up and uh, proposed that morning. And um, so we drove down to Gainesville for the game. And we had a, like back then it was a bag phone, right? So it was eighteen thousand dollars a minute if you use the back phone. <laughs> yes. So we're trying to call our fam, for, you know, our family to let them know what had happened. And um, well, I'm sorry, she's not home. Uh, you don't have to call back. Uh, and so we got our absolute tails worn out, kicked, and everything uh, in Gainesville that night. And I did not care. Um, yeah. Best day in my life. Amazing. I, I can understand why. <laughs> yeah yeah shout out to mrs hug dog yeah that's right that's right that's thank right. god she said yes <laughs> <laughs> uh fantastic um keeping it in the family uh brother joel mm. has, has has some questions man he's 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 got a list but some of them are some of them i think are shorter ones but hush puppy yes yes after your hush puppy um yeah. all right so we said are there two other sporting events that occur at the same time that compete for your attention slash attendance and tear your heartstrings more than the G day than a G day masters Saturday. No. Um, yeah, not even close because I mean, those are my two loves. The, the only thing I can think of would be Braves world series, Georgia home. Game, right. Mm -hmm. um, and there've been some epic Saturdays when Georgia has played and the Braves have been in a, in a playoff series or something like that. Yeah. Um, back yeah. in who this was, I, I we called it sports Armageddon, but um, <laughs> back in, in 91, Georgia beat a number six ranked Clemson team at home at night. Uh, Eric Zyre's coming out party, mm. the Braves clinched the NLC. The, the, no, they, cl they clinched the NL West that night. People are, you know, it it was absolutely insane. And by the way, Tech got smoked that day, so yes. it was just <laughs> a sports day. So the only thing I can think of is is uh, Braves playoff in Georgia. Okay, that's good. That's good. Yeah. I couldn't come up with anything. That's a good one. That's, that's a good one. Um, what is the loudest sports moment you've ever witnessed in person inside stadium, inside Sanford, or out, or and out? Okay, inside Sanford Stadium. LSU 2013. That yes. fourth quarter was absolutely electric. Our seats are on the south side. And for the entire fourth quarter, you look at the student section, 
And it looked like someone had kicked an anthill. It was just like, there were just things <laughs> like floating yes. and moving the whole time. It was, it was awesome. And when Mettenberger got the ball mm-hmm. right there at the end of the game and, and Georgia had to make that final stand, I, I've, I think it's the loudest I've ever heard it. Notre Dame in 2017 uh, was, was really, really good. Um, but strangely enough, it might be 2022 Tennessee. I mean, we were – Sanford Stadium was absolutely on full tilt that day. Um, it was. It, it, it was loud. Um, loved everything about it. And um, outside of it, I've heard some great roars at Augusta, but I mean that doesn't even compare to some of the stadium. The probably the loudest actually is a Falcon playoff game. Uh, okay. I went to a Falcon 49er NFC uh, playoff game in the Georgia Dome, and we uh, we stopped. Did the Falcon stop Garrison Hurst late in the fourth quarter, which was kind of bittersweet. Um, and I- and, and Won, won that game, and that place was – you could not hear yourself think. It was really loud in there. Was that, really? ni- ni- was that 98? Sorry. Is that – I do have been. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. I remember that game. That, like, that, was, a, that was the Super Bowl year. Um, so, I guess they won that game, and then that was the game that sent them to Minnesota, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. 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 So, that that game was – Okay. Yeah. My ears were ringing for a solid two hours after that game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I totally concur on that LSU game though. That was that was electric. The, mm-hmm. LSU games tend to be that way because like 2004 was also super loud. 2004, I felt like was it until uh, 13. Yeah. So yeah, Reggie agreed. Brown just showed. Up. Yes, yes, I saw a video of that on Twitter today, and I watched it like twice. <laughs> Did you really? Nice. Yeah. Yeah. It was like every David Green touchdown pass from that game, which there was like five. So yeah. Nice. Um, let's see. Uh okay. What is the squirrels bet at ANGC? Joel wants to know. Okay. So here's this here's the squirrel bet. Um so Augusta National built on a former nursery, right? Uh, known for their horticulture, uh, all the holes are named after a you know a bush or a flower or a tree or what have you. Uh, ever seen a squirrel there? Mm. No, no. So if you ever go, bet the person that you're going with. Just say, hey, I bet you a hundred bucks you'll, you'll not see a squirrel today. <laughs> what? <laughs> nice. Honest to God, in in the 38 years I've been going to Augusta National, I've never ever seen a squirrel at Augusta National. And if you just ask somebody that, they're like, oh, my, I'll take that bet. There isn't one. Maybe there's like, maybe they have a squirrel chirper somewhere. I don't know. But uh, mm, no, okay. I've never seen a squirrel at Augusta National. So feel free to bet somebody. You'll win the bet every time. Amazing. What's the what's the story behind that? I have no idea. <laughs> just an observation. I, have, I, I, thought, I thought as a worker, you might have some inside information. I have I have no I have no clue. I, is it is it like can, is it like Disney where they just like have like this horde of feral cats that just like go <laughs> go around? Maybe maybe uh, I, I, <laughs> no, nothing is out of the realm of possibility. But uh, yeah yeah, I, I loved it when a couple of years ago someone said, you know, um, oh my gosh, yeah, they were like putting ice bags down on the uh, azaleas so they wouldn't bloom early. Like, what are you, an idiot? No, they would never do that. <laughs> but but yeah, yeah, people think <laughs> anything is possible at Augusta National. So maybe there is a superhuman cat that chases all the squirrels away. But I, I don't think so. Amazing. Amazing. No right. squirrels, but just, just win that bet. It's an easy yeah. 100 bucks every year. That's amazing. I was super curious about that. Uh, he wanted to know what's your favorite blizzard and why? Uh, M&M. No chocolate yeah. sauce. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Chocolate sauce. Is this is yes. the is the no chocolate sauce? Okay, because I've had this <laughs> I've actually had this <laughs> argument with a Dairy Queen employee. So my favorite is Heath. And the recipe for the Heath Blizzard is the Heath candy and the chocolate sauce. But it usually it can get too soupy if they add the chocolate sauce. Like it doesn't blend right. 
I actually had ones where somebody kept throwing the blizzards away because they couldn't make it right. So from that day on, I always always ordered it. Heath Blizzard, no chocolate was what I always said. So I, I once ran into a guy at Perimeter Mall. <laughs> this guy started like arguing with me. He said, if, if I don't put chocolate sauce and I'm not adhering to the Dairy Queen uh, recipe for the blizzard. And I was like, I don't want it. It's going to be too soupy. He's like, why do you say that? I was like, because that's how people make it. He's like, you've never had me make you a blizzard. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did, did, did he serve it to you and like yes to, uh, yes <laughs> so that was actually the when it when that happened was the first time i would ever actually had someone turn the blizzard upside down for me and and i'm not gonna lie it was fantastic but that's the only guy that'll ever let me make one of it i i still order it uh no chocolate so well it, it, if <laughs> if by chance if by chance they had a girl scout thin mint blizzard i would mm. order it like every day but they don't but um or oh my god! Can you imagine if they did Samoas? Holy crap! Samoa? And I was yeah. like, I could get on board with Samoas, but if you want to brush your teeth and eat ice cream, that's fine with me. But like, <laughs> like uh, JP, what's your go-to <laughs> blizzard? Uh, I mean, honestly, it's cookies and cream. Like we're we're a cookies and cream family for sure. Um, I will say that someone posted the Nutter Butter uh, Blizzard. Uh, I have not had that yet. <laughs> I think it was. Uh, I think Ruse Dixie Dog tagged my dad on Twitter. Like, have you seen this? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, I, I'm like. I'm like. I, that, that thing is screaming for some Buffalo Trace. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. I love it. I love uh, it. All right, last one from Joel. Who is slash was the most entertaining Georgia player ever? Entertaining? Yeah, entertaining. Like on field? I, I meant to. I meant to. Mm, I, you, meant to tw- I meant to tweet him the clarifying question. The clarifying question. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I mean, I'll give you mine. I've got a pretty quick. Okay. To, to me, it's Heinz Ward. To me, he entertained me. Always a smile on his face. Uh, played every position on offense. Uh, and would block the heck out of anyone. I love Heinz Ward. So to me, it's Heinz. John, what on, about you? On field, I'd have to go David Pollock. Um, mm, that's a good one. I have to go David Pollock. Yeah. Um, off field, dude, Brett Thorson is quickly rising <laughs> up the ranks. Yes. And like, yes. Like, I kid you not, I want that boy on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Oh, uh, uh, man. Ooh. Um, so funny, Heinz Ward. Um, I saw a video of him the other day in the fourth quarter against Georgia Tech when he was playing quarterback, leading us down the field to uh, win. Mm-hmm. What a, how did he get away with that throwing motion? <laughs> it was like, oh my God, this guy's an all timer, but he looks like he's like throwing a shot put. And it's it was, a, um, yes, it was, wild. it was bad. Um, so on field, no, Sean. Um, mm. you, know, you never, you never knew when that guy just might, you know, freaking B button and jump right <laughs> over somebody or go flying in the corner in Tempe. Um, off field was uh, a guy that was before you all his time, Richard Tarditz. Uh, okay. he was a French exchange student that played defensive end, and his nickname was La Sac. And- <laughs> And Tarditz was like this <laughs> renaissance man. And like literally he he hit he hit Athens by storm and he's riding around campus and he's this gigantic dude and he's on a skateboard and <laughs> get, just go back and look up highlights of Richard Tarditz and you'll be like, that guy was awesome. <laughs> it was, it's really good. Uh, that, name, that name sounds familiar. For it does, I know. I know that name. I, know yeah. that. I can't like uh, picture any highlights or anything, but I definitely know that name. Oh, he was name. a he was a bad mother. What he was. <laughs> I love yeah. it. Fantastic. Those are good ones. Um, <laughs> all right, Matthew Key wanted to know preference between a three thirty or a night game start. Ah, oh. ooh, three thirty. I'm with you. Three thirty. Three thirty. Um. Even better when it's three thirty after time change, um, so you mm. get best of yeah. both worlds. Um, yeah. yeah, right. That you know when when you're when you're setting up when 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 you're prepping and setting up a tailgate before seven a.m. and the kickoff isn't for twelve hours <laughs> plus later. Yes, it, it, it's a long freaking day. Um, 
I had so much and, fun and, at Ole Miss, though. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you did. <laughs> in the fourth quarter, I um, was there. I was there. I was there exhausted. early. Mm. I was there early with you. <laughs> yeah. So three thirty, three thirty is just. Um, but but I think the other thing that goes with that is you're the game, right? Exactly. You know, yes. you know you're the game, and yep. that is um, that's special. I Not agree. anymore. Uh, yeah, well, we're gonna see. I, I don't even know. I don't even know what is considered with now. Everything's with ESPN. What that'll be. So I refuse to, to accept that the twelve o'clock game is the game. I refuse to accept that. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it isn't. But yeah, three, it three, might three. be up in Michigan, but it's not down here. Oh. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> nice. Agreed. Agreed. The, J- Jim and I talked about this. I feel like last season wasn't there like a four o'clock game or something like that. Wasn't there like the sweet spot that we were talking about where we had like four o'clock? Like, mm-hmm. holy crap! We just threaded the needle and found the perfect time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's really exactly. good. It's really good. Yeah, it's like you know, if you can, it, it, I agree. Like the the seven o'clock is is too late. Everyone's a little too wound up. I would say, and then, but if you can. Like you said, Jason, after the time change, if you can end and have the fourth quarter light up Sanford with the three thirty kickoff or four o'clock kickoff, that's to me that's that's the look. If the Rose Bowl can write it into their contract, <laughs> the only time they'll ever kick off is at yes. you know two o'clock Pacific time because of the God forbid the mountains and how many times does Kirk Herb Street talk about it? Yeah. But it, like, then why don't we at UGA just say, hey, here's what time we're playing. If you want to show it, great. If you don't, screw you. I would love for that to happen because it, it. should because we can. I love it. We should just take, have our own TV contract. Exactly. Take the, take the master's approach. <laughs> oh, exactly. Yes, you, guys, seriously. you guys don't want to televise it? Fine. We'll do it ourselves. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Wait, commercials? We don't need it. I don't care. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. All right, let's see. Bobby Wilson. I, I love it when questions open like this. He said, oh, I can't wait for this one. Double exclamation point. So love that. Uh, love the, our last guest, our last guest, Bobby Wilson. Uh, okay, one, favorite wine? Harlan Estate. Amazing. I, I love how fast that rolled off, too. That's fantastic. Uh, um, it, it's epic. epic. Favorite bourbon? Weller family, or I guess BTAC. So... Um, <laughs> Any any anything B tag, um, I mean I'm looking at my selection over there. Um, I think if it's going to be Weller family, however, the Parker's uh, series has really come on strong for me in the last year or so. I finally acquired my first bottle of Parker's last week, and um, ooh, it's really good. But Weller twelve CYPB. 107 mm-hmm. green label doesn't matter weller is always good i think john i think, I think that's you right yeah uh-huh. the, the, the weller 12 yeah yeah Ugh. weller 12 is is if i could get an endless supply of it forever i'd be happy with it 107 would be in that same vein too uh you just never see i never see either of those parkers i've seen a handful of times parkers is one of those ones that i've been like oh man that 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 would be amazing. I've never had it. So well, come I, on over. I've heard, I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. I'm a, yeah. all right. I'll see you later, Jim. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if I can meet up with you in Coors Field, we can meet up in Peace Street Corner. So come <laughs> oh, on. Oh, that's true. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. Um, all right. Masters pick to win. Scheffler. Yeah. Yeah. He's uh he's good. Uh he, he's really good. Although I will say. Uh, late, late yesterday, as we were leaving, we were debating going up to the practice range and we thought, ah, we'll swing by. We, we were on 16 and we watched the guys skip balls over the in the <laughs> pond for yeah. like three hours, two or three hours. And so we went back over to 13 green and 14 T let's just see who's coming around. And lo and behold, we get Spieth, Thomas, Cantlay, Harmon, mm-hmm. like right in like a 20 minute window. And um, I don't know what it is about Augusta, but Jordan Spieth just plays that course beautifully, and um, I think I think he I think he could do it. Um, I, selfishly, I, I would like to see Justin Thomas win there. 
even though he's a bammer. Um, yeah, I would yeah. I would really like to see him win. And then lastly, um, if a bulldog were to win again, like Bubba, yeah. um, I just think that would be, I just think that would be so freaking cool. Um, Cause I mean, we watched Harris English tee off on 18 and literally, you know, he's walking down and everybody's barking and go dogs. Yeah, and yeah. I'm thinking, could you imagine <laughs> playing 18 holes of golf and all 18 holes, people cheering for your school? I mean, yeah. that would, I think that might be like my top of the top kind of a deal. So, um, Scheffler's playing really, really well, but I, I think it is, oh, I saw some cool stats, like 44 of the last 44 Masters winners uh, were not first timers and 18 of the last 18 Masters winners were not the betting favorite going into the tournament. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Scheffler is the prohibitive. That, that, that does not that does not bode well for Mr. Scheffler. <laughs> no, he is their prohibitive. In fact, the, the odds haven't been this low since Tiger. Really? Okay. Yep. Which that we discussed last one whether Tiger was playing or not, and we we do know now he is he is playing. So yeah. he's out there. Somebody somebody was quoted recently, and I can't remember which golfer it was, um, said that this is the best that they've ever seen Tiger Woods play. Uh, Zalatoris. Zalatoris. That's what it was. <laughs> Will uh, easy. Happy Gilmore's caddy. Uh, he looks like Happy <laughs> Gilmore's caddy. <laughs> oh my God, he does. He, he totally does. <laughs> I wish you hadn't put that in my brain. Sorry. It's, <laughs> it's, it's not as, it's not as bad now as when like he like first came on tour when his hair was a little longer. He really loved yeah. him back then. Well, <laughs> as, as Jeff Lanier on Twitter said, he could use a double cheeseburger from Booger Bottom. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, yeah. And, uh, What's the guy that won last week at Valero? Um, but but Batia. Oh Batia. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. What yeah. a great, what a great, what a great interview that guy has. Oh man, he's awesome. Uh, I mean, but yeah, they, they both need a double cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he really come on, does. man. He really does. <laughs> he really does. Dude, talk about like let's. Let, let, sorry to go sidetrack on Masters right now, but like. The the story. It's our of, podcast. We can talk about what we want to talk about. This this <laughs> the story of Batia being a, a drive chip and putt guy yeah. from the Masters previously, and now he you know wins a playoff in epic fashion, and now to to go to the Masters and do that that is a great story, and I am totally here for it if he wins the Masters. So yeah. you no, know, and, and you know what's crazy is. Um, and and I don't know what it is about, I don't know what it is about Augusta National, but it brings out the best in every writer. And, and and you get you get stories at the Masters that you just don't get at any other major golf tournament. Now you're you're gonna hear the cool stories about the U.S. Open and being on on Father's Day and having a baby, and I mean there's gonna be some cool things that you hear about. But they're just the the consistent number of storylines that come out of Augusta is really unbelievable. And I can't I just can't get over the amount of thoughtfulness that the that the guys bring. And I I think part of it is because the way the media is treated at Augusta. I mean, they are treated Mm -hmm. like royalty. And um, I was uh, listening to Chip Towers the other morning on. 960 with uh with Dave and he was talking about how he wanted to do a story on Keegan Bradley and full swing and like how he was part of that mm, and yeah. you know, just just th- the thoughtful nature of the fact that these guys are so intentional about going to Augusta National and writing these stories um I, I think that's really unique to that event and I think it's really cool that that you've got the drive chip and putt thing and yeah. I mean, God only knows what we're going to hear on live from tomorrow, but it's going to be on all day long, you know, for me. And I'm going to hear something cool I've never heard before. And I'm going to, you know, think it's awesome. And want to <laughs> again, at seven to nine and then from nine to 11, I'll watch the replay because that's what I do. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. I'm going to put I'm going to throw I'm going to throw uh, the the dark horse, like dark, dark horse to, to win. Nick, Nick Dunlop. Wait, the Alabama kid. Uh, I'm not sure where he went to school, but he's like 20 years old. He just, he basically just turned pro. He just won the, he won the American Express Championship. 
So he played at Bama. Um, so he played at Bama. He won the Amex. And um, so we watched him and his caddy both skip golf balls across the pond <laughs> on 16 yeah. yesterday. And uh, he's a tall drink of water. But so is that kid <laughs> from Tech, uh, Christian Lam- Lamprecht. I, I, I know I said it wrong, but um, they are they are big dudes. Um, and I I just don't understand how they get the ball speed. It's unreal. Right, right. Yeah. Unreal. Yeah, so he he's he's like number one in fewest putts, number two in par five scoring, top ten national driving distance. Like that's what like I was just looking at like who's 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 like the dark horse. He's definitely like nowhere near the top. Like like you know betting the, the betters bet to win sure. or whatever. But he's a dark horse candidate for the courses at Augusta. I know well, the course doesn't suit his game, but I'm going to be a homer and say Brian Harmon and much to the chagrin <laughs> of Brooks Kepka, as Jason, you told me earlier. Oh, man. <laughs> Holy smoke. Apparently, there was a pretty good little dust up between those two today, so I can't wait to read more about it. What? Yeah. yeah. Apparently, on the internet. Brooks, yeah. <laughs> Apparently, Brooks uh, was was um, not none too pleased with playing with Harmon, who might be a little bit slow and might waggle a time or two. And I think Brian Harmon told him where he could stick it. <laughs> Brooks, Brooks yeah. just seems like the kind of guy that has issues with everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How about how about uh, I'll, I'll do I'll do a shout out for Waitinson's last Saturday, Chris Kirk. Oh, I saw oh. Uh, Scott was following the other day. Yep we 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 saw him yesterday. Um, another you don't realize how tall he is till you see him, but um, man, he just. Punishes the golf ball. Punish it. I I love that all those guys also have the power G on their bag too. So oh, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Heck yeah, so cool. Uh, let's see. Bubby wants to know. Sorry for the random pivot. <laughs> Bubby <laughs> wants to know top three non SEC opponents with whom Josh Brooks and Kirby should work a home and home. Penn State, mm. Oregon. Either Ohio State or Michigan. I can't disagree with that. Yeah. I love I love all those. I, M- Michigan's always on my list. We've been there like what once. So I've been to the stadium, but I haven't been to a game there, so it doesn't count in the fifty-two. Um, yeah. But what's, have you ever been? Mm, no, no. So crazy thing about Michigan Stadium: when you walk in from the street level, you're like twenty rows from the top of the stadium. Everything's down be- beneath you. It's like, it's almost like it's dug into the ground. It's really? very very bizarre, and you don't you don't know it until you until you see it. Yeah, and you're thinking, wow, that is really really weird. And so, um, it 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 just has such a unique feel to it. Uh, it's it's one of the one of the stranger things I think I've seen uh, out there because you you know you're just so used to driving up on this gigantic piece of metal yeah. or concrete, you know, you know, just standing out from every, <laughs> everything else. Not right. Michigan. It, it's really kind of cool, actually. That is cool. Interesting. That is interesting. I wonder, yeah. I wonder what that would be like uh, to be in a game. It would uh, be cold. That's what it would be like. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's, let's go. Let's go take over that stadium too. Yeah. yeah seriously. Right. seriously. I'm in. That's what we do. I'm in. That's what we do. Um, let's see Dwight, uh, our buddy Dwight, which by the way, I'm wearing a uh, Bulldogs battling breast cancer yeah, uh, you are. t-shirt tonight. Protect Love the pups. Um, I think I actually know the first, the the first question, which was, uh, how did you and Dana meet? We met at the Governor's Honors Program um, back in the summer of 1990. We were both nerds, and uh, yeah, so we were vocal <laughs> music majors, and we met the summer before our senior year in high school, and we started dating at the end of our freshman year in college. Amazing. All right. And he said in first date, do you recall the fir- what the first date was? Yes. Uh, June did she, 18th. Did she steal a steak from you? <laughs> yeah, <that> was- <laughs> call back. Call back to the Frip Dog episode. <laughs> no. No, but we went to Applebee's. <laughs> yes. That's high, yes. that's high. That's high. That's fine dining in college. Yeah. So uh, on 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 an anniversary of our first date, we actually went back and we sat in the same table at Applebee's over at Town Center Mall in Marietta 
Amazing. And, and, oh, recreated, like, recreated our first day. Right down the road. Was, yeah. Oh, For sure. She's a Marietta Blue Devil. So, uh, yeah, that's where she was. Fantastic. I'd like, right. the hug, I'd like the hug dog table, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. With the Amazing. double Brutus. <laughs> uh, so good. Um, what's your favorite golf course played? Augusta National, Aaron Hills. Um, uh, ooh, number three. I don't know. Um, you, had, you had me at Augusta National. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Augusta National, Augusta National, <laughs> <Yes>. Augusta National. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. When did uh, you play Augusta? January of last year. Nice. Oh, it awesome. was one of those unique 60 degree January days. Mm. It, was, it was magical. Um, <laughs> was, I'm not gonna lie it was amazing <laughs> <laughs> yeah me me and my buddy scott were sitting there and they're like hey you know hey sir we, you know what would you like for lunch and we're staring at the bar <laughs> we both said uh george t stag please <laughs> it's perfect <laughs> like where else are you gonna play augusta national short course big course and drink george t stag at lunch nowhere but augusta national so there you go amazing amazing that is cool uh-huh. I saw I saw the uh, uh Jason have you have you been to the new the new grill like I've saw I've seen pictures of like the there's like a new there's like a new eatery kind of thing at Augusta it seems like no nope. and then okay didn't know if it was that new no I I don't I don't I don't know unless it's that new thing across the street with the hospitality deal um I I don't mm, I don't know hmm uh, do, do I want to know velvet hammer or, or old fashioned? <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, so Dwight, Dwight tweeted, he was going to play Augusta country club. And, um, and as many of you know, it's adjacent to the Augusta national. And I said, just, just do yourself a favor, go to the, go to the bar in the bottom level of, of the club and ask for a velvet hammer. Don't ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> he sends me a picture later, and all it is is the picture, and, and all it's a boozy vanilla milkshake. I mean, that's all it is. Okay. It's freaking amazing, right? And so he was like, "Holy crap, that was amazing!" And that was on the heels of he was at he was at another club, um, which might actually be number three on my list. But he told me he's going to this other place, and uh, and I said, uh, "Yeah, you get the tequila old fashioned." And he said, "What?" All I said was, trust me, with like the little emoji doing the little like, gotcha. And uh, yeah, so um, ooh, good old fashioned's hard to beat, but Velvet Hammer just fixes everything that's wrong with the world. Ah, that sounds phenomenal. Mm-hmm. It's, it's good. <laughs> I got, uh, as a consumer of ice cream, uh, I'm all on that. I love yeah. ice cream. I love ice yeah. cream. I like ice cream. I like old fashions. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I've been, I've been, I've been kind of partial to the mezcal old fashions lately at the Mexican joints. Nice mm. work. Yeah. Nice, nice work. So Dana's our tequila drinker. Um, um, so left side of the bar over here is bourbon. Right side is tequila. And um, speaking of bulldogs or breast cancer, battling breast cancer, I'm staring at three bulldog Moscato bottles, all signed by Brock Bowers. That we that we bought it at Bulldogs yeah. uh, at their at their golf tournament for a fundraiser. Um, Amazing. Dana Dana loves tequila, but mezcal she can't do it. All right, there's something about the smoke, but mm. whew, uh, gotcha. tequila old fashioned is. Um, if you haven't done it, trust me, try it. You'll <laughs> love it. Nice, really good. Really, right. good. I don't know if there's anything going on with this one. Trisha Ann asked, "Who's your favorite?" Rice Krispie, Snap, Crackle, or Pop? <laughs> Did they do anything? Um, um, which one had the sleepy hat on? Is that? Oh, uh, see, I don't even. I can't even remember what the differences are between them. Um, uh, I'm going with Crackle. 
Okay. Thanks, Trish Ann. That's a good question. I, have no <laughs> idea. I, I wish I had. I wish I had something to like. Crackle, definitively crackle, tell you. crackle is the one that has the sleepy hat. Yes. <laughs> Got it. Oh. Amazing. Snap. Snap has the chef hat, and Pop has the like. I don't know conductor top hat situation. Mm. Very cool. Okay. okay. Well, crackle it is. <laughs> I'm gonna go with Snap. I don't know. I'm just gonna throw it out there. Just to just to just to differ from Jim, I'm gonna go pop. Yeah, okay. Go. I feel like pop would work for you because you used you you had the old the old uh, conductor hat that you wore to the uh, the goalpost game. That was um, the dri- that was the driving hat. The driving yeah. hat. Driving hat. <laughs> driving hat. Sorry. Did you wear driving gloves too? <laughs> <laughs> did not wear driving gloves. My dad. Uh, my dad did not give me driving gloves for that outfit. <laughs> got it. Well, what about driving shoes? <laughs> <laughs> no driving shoes either. <laughs> I think this is this can be our last one, and this also from Trisha Ann. But I think this is timely based on something that have happened on Twitter uh, recently. What's y'all's stance on the black jersey hype? So what I'm saying there is I don't know if you've seen the the Georgia equipment. Uh, I think was it today? Was it today or yesterday, John? I know we texted about it. It doesn't matter. It was, it was April Fool. I thought it was April Fool's Day when they. Posted. Oh no! But they've done it again. So oh, they again geez. they did another video like this week that said. Uh, you asked and we delivered like black jerseys and they're like laying down like red jerseys and black jerseys, you know, amongst the different teams. So they love to troll us and, uh, and show us the black jerseys. Yeah. The April fools was, that April was actually, fools. I thought that was pretty good. That was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was good. Uh, uh, so, um, probably have a little, too much insider knowledge on this, but uh, <laughs> I I think they're very good at getting eyeballs. I'll leave it at that. Yeah, yeah. I m- my stance is what they should do, which is not what they will do, is that if they're if you're ever going to wear them again, just tell everyone before the season because I feel like the reason Kirby doesn't like it is he sees them as a distraction. And like all the hype leading up to the week or whatever. But if you just say before the season when it'll happen, like we did in 2016, that goes away. That's my take, but whatever. I I, I 100% agree with you. And I feel as though, um, I feel as though it should, if if I were czar for a day, right. (laughs) I I would make it, I would make it really simple. I, I would tell my seniors, look guys, if, if we go undefeated at home, in your senior season, and you want to wear black jerseys in your home in in your home finale, it's your pick. You 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 make the choice. It's totally mm. your call. Yeah. And I would just love that to get to put it in the hands of the players because um, those guys absolutely love the 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 cool um, you know the like the white helmets that they do for the pictures when the recruits are there and the black jerseys. Those kids love that kind of stuff. But yeah. um, but Kirby doesn't. He does not want the distraction. He just you know, Georgia wears red. I mean that's that's the end of the story. But I I think it would be cool if they had the option to decide that. But I think what the football uh, equipment uh, feed is doing is just um, creating <laughs> excitement, and I don't blame them. Yeah, yeah. And by the <laughs> way, those guys work their tail. They really do. I think they're good at what they do. The 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 their social media accounts are fantastic. Yep, yep. They work really hard. They're unsung heroes for sure. Here, here's my thing. Here's my thing with <laughs> uniforms. I would love it. I would love that they would just like you. You mentioned earlier the SEC is just shrouded. You love the tradition. You love the pomp and circumstance. Mm-hmm. Like there's tradition behind everything that we do in the Southeast, right? And right. SEC football. So it, make it a tradition. If you make it a tradition, then it becomes part of the lore. And it, the same way that the, you know, the battle hymn, the, 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 the lone trumpeter before the game wasn't mm-hmm. part of our lore until we made it a tradition. Yeah. If you make it red pants at Tennessee is our tradition, black, black jerseys, at home against Auburn is our tradition. Like just, just do it. Yeah. Light up Sanford. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, yeah, you're, 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 you're so right. And, um, 
I'm just af- I'm just afraid. I, I'm what am I saying? Afraid. I, I'm thankful. Montanini is dead. Montanini is dead, Jason. Yeah, is dead. <laughs> totally doing it. But, but you know what though? I mean, Kirby, Kirby cares, right? Yeah, Kirby yeah. cares, and um, and he realizes that all of those things are things, and um, and he doesn't want you know he he wants to keep the main thing the main thing, right? And and he doesn't want anything else to go around that, and if by God, that's what he wants, then I will stand behind him 100%. In Kirby, we trust. In Kirby, we in Kirby we trust. Truth. Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, that 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 exhausts our listener questions. They were fantastic. I like we we got to weave through all the stuff we wanted to talk about. Uh, so cool. that thanks to thanks to everyone who who. Who, who reached out? Like I said, we got a huge reaction when we said we were having you on, Jason. <laughs> uh, I, I, thank you. I think <laughs> uh, that's how I took it. That's how I take it. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's just a testament to you and your legacy. So, uh, uh, well, we, we appreciate what... we appreciate your hospitality. Um, we cherish the friendships that we've made um, through the podcast and through the tailgate, and so you you've been a big part of that. Um, my son has been able to partake and you have in turn kind of helped pass down some of the things that are now important for my family. So I appreciate you very much. Well, yeah, golly, my, my pleasure. Um, you know, the, I, I think the, I think the greatest thing about social media is the, um, is the concept of, you know, new friends that you meet that way. And, um, you know, like you know, oh my my Twitter friends. <laughs> what 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 does what does that mean? Right? <laughs> and it's like, well, these are people that you communicate with that you may or may not know personally, but yet somehow you get to know them and you realize that um they're just like you. They just don't live next door or they don't play golf in your foursome or whatever, but yet they're they're just like you. And you know, I, I I did I did see a couple of the questions that came in, and some were like, you know, favorite this or whatever else. And I, I was I did I did kind of think about it ahead of of tonight. And I think the the biggest thing I wanted to say is, you know, my favorite something is when I get to share it with people that I care about. Um, it, it could be yeah. a it could be a piece of crap bottle of wine, right? <laughs> but if I'm sharing it with really great friends and we're having great conversation or we're, you know, talking about the dogs or, or our favorite, whatever. Or snap, crackle and pop. <laughs> or, 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 or my, or my man crackle, um, you know, then it, it just, I don't know. It, it, it makes, it makes everything that much better. And for all the ills that social media has created. And, and I think it is a, um, it's sometimes it's an absolute toilet bowl, um, I'm so thankful that it has provided a platform for people to connect on a subject and, and really truly become friends. And I'm so grateful for the platform that you guys have. Um, you know, I listen every week and I, and I always want to hear the little quips or the inside jokes because you, know, <laughs> you pick up on it and you, and you know who you're talking about and, and it makes it so much, so much more fun, but more importantly, it, it's just, it, it's become a community and, um, you just look yeah. at what's possible when people get behind a, a movement and um, it is, it's really amazing. And you look at some of the, the money that's been raised for, you know, families in need, or you look at the things that have been done or the experiences that people in our network have provided for other people. And you are able to connect through social media. Well, for that, I say I'm all in. And I think it's amazing and I think the community that it creates is awesome. And you know what? If you swing by the take gate, tailgate, um, <laughs> I, I promise you, um, I will be there to to welcome you. Um, and I just appreciate you guys doing it. It's really fun. Yeah. No. Absolutely, Jason. Amen. Uh, you you you've welcomed you know my family to your tailgate as well. I think my my dad and I came by for the the we were the first. It was just the two of us. I remember texting you like, hey, like. Can we swing by tailgate? <laughs> We'd love to come meet you. And then now it's become like a thing. Uh, and uh, heck, it's it's led to uh, 
<laughs> Lily and I come into Bulldog Brunch with y'all uh, and your oh family. Oh my gosh. Uh, so <laughs> it's been, uh, it's been, jo- been hey, fantastic. Hey, John and I were at Forest Field together for the Braves. Yes. Holy oh, cow. Forest Field. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man. That's so, yeah, amazing. I agree. I, I, I totally agree with that. Like you, you do hear so much about what's bad with social media. And I don't disagree. There aren't bad things, but I think, you know, our relationship we've developed with you and, and so many people and, and everyone that we've, we've gotten through this platform, I think are, uh, are evidence of, of the good that can come from it. So it's a real blessing. To hear you say that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. If nothing else, we get to tell our wives, see, 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 <laughs> see, see? <laughs> they're real people. They're nice people. Oh, so good. Yeah. Uh, oh, so these true. are my Twitter fans. What? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Trust me. They're real people. And, uh, and, you, and you know what though, but here's the cool thing. Um, you know, you, you said you get a DM from one of those people or you see a tweet and guess what? We all come running to help. And yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what this world's about. Um, and it's about helping other people. And, um, and if that gives, if that's a platform for making someone else, you know, have a great day or smile when they need, when, when, when they're having a tough day, um, or just giving them a reason to, take their mind off of what they're dealing with right now. Uh, sign me up. Pretty awesome. Yeah. Dog Amen. Twitter, dog Twitter is undefeated. Amen. <laughs> undefeated for sure. <laughs> All right. I don't know what else I can add to that other than, other than cheers to that. Um, Jason, we've, we've J- John and I have talked about this for a while. Wanted to have you on. Um, this was the, I, I, I truly now, even after having this conversation more, so feel like this was the perfect week to do this G day yeah. and masters with that combining, uh, loved all the conversation. It was fantastic. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, it's been an absolute blast. Well, Agreed. the pleasure was mine. Appreciate you guys a lot. Thanks for what you do. And, uh, we'll see you real soon. Awesome. Sounds good. Go, Go dogs. dogs. Go dogs.